Welcome to the lecture 14 of the course US213 Object Oriented Programming of the Kohat University of Science and Technology. In this lecture, we will continue our discussion of polymorphism and we will continue with the example that we were discussing the previous time in our lecture 13 and we will further look at the, some more concepts that are relevant to polymorphism. Again, the book that we are following for this course is Java How to Program Early Objects Version Detail and Detail and there are some tutorials that you can follow on the links given on this uh, slide and maybe if you can follow other uh, useful material online and some of the relevant concepts that we have some uh, discussed uh, previously and maybe we some discuss some of the others in, in the future uh, classes can also be seen uh, here on this introductory slide. In our previous lecture we talked about uh, an example where we had a person class and then we had different kinds of shifts that were the subclasses of uh, that person class and we had a cook dinner method in that person class which was overridden by the subclasses of the person class and we were calling uh, the method of each of those uh, subclass of the cook dinner method by using the object, uh, objects of those subclasses we were getting different kinds of results what we can do here is that we can create an array of person objects as we can see in this example that if we create a list of the person objects or an array of the person objects we can initialize the objects of the subclasses using a reference to the superclass and the reason for that is that every object of the subclass is an object of the superclass if you have an array of variable that refer to objects of many subclass types and in this way we can initialize multiple subclass objects and store them in an array of the superclass this example demonstrates that an object of a subclass can be treated as an object of its superclass enabling various interesting manipulations and we'll see in the, in the examples in the future that we can use an object of the subclass as an object of the superclass but we cannot use an object of the superclass as an object of the subclass the reverse is not true in the example below we have an array holding five objects of type person because of their inheritance relationship with the person class the house chef the pizza chef the kfc chef and the takeaway chef classes can be assigned to the array within the for loop if you, if you, as you can see within the for loop what should happen is the cook dinner method is invoked on each element of the array and as we were doing previously uh, using the objects of each class separately and we were calling the cook dinner method same case will happen over here that we are getting different kinds of results for each call to the cook dinner method based on the calling object the result here depends on the object stored not on the type of the variable so it doesn't matter that the type of this variables is the person class but the type of the object that the variable is storing and that is what matters for example this p list 0 is storing an object of the person class so when we call the cook dinner method on this object it should call the cook dinner method of the person class and similarly this p list 1 should call the method of the cook dinner method of the house chef class and so on and so forth so the result of this method call depends on the object stored not on the type of the variable and the reason for that is the object of the subclass is an object of the superclass and we can hold the objects of the subclasses in a type of the person class in the type of the superclass which in this case is the person class 
and all of this is possible because of the inheritance relationship and when we uh, we said that an inheritance relationship is an is a relationship where a subclass is a superclass and in this case a person is a person of course but a house chef is a person because a house chef is a subclass of the person class similarly a pizza chef is a person because a pizza chef the pizza chef is a subclass of the person class and the kfc chef is a person because kfc chef in our example is a subclass of the person class takeaway chef is a person and because takeaway chef in our example is inheriting inheriting the person class and because of this relationship we can store references to the objects of these classes in the super classes object or variable and it will work the same way as we were doing it separately this for loop will one by one call the relevant methods using a call to the cook dinner method the, uh, the relevant method for each class will be called with the help of the same example we'll try to understand what are the things that are checked at the compile time and what are the details that are checked or executed at the run time so if we look at our example what we did was we declared an array and we stored all of the subclass objects into that array that was an after person now our compiler will make sure that if the variable or the array that we are storing an object in is compatible with the type of the object that we are storing in that array or that variable and the compiler checks this at the compile time before the program is executed when a superclass variable contains a reference to a subclass object and that reference is used to call a method the subclass version of the method is called and we saw that in uh, the, our examples as well that when we were using the superclass to refer, make a reference to a subclass object and when we call the method that were th there both in the superclass and the subclasses the subclasses version of the method was being called for example in the person class we had a cook a dinner method and when we declared an object of the for example one of the subclasses using the reference to the superclasses variable and when we use that variable to call the cook dinner method the subclasses method was being called and we saw that in our previous examples in the previous lectures as well what the java compiler does is it allows this crossover because an object of a subclass is an object of its superclass but not vice versa the compiler will need to make sure that if we are trying to call a method that is not there in the superclass but that is there in the subclass we cannot call the subclasses method using an object of the superclass or a reference to the object of the superclass and this checking is done at compile time when the compiler encounters a method call made through a variable the compiler determines if the method can be called by checking the variable's class type and it does that it checks the compatibility of the two objects if they are compatible and they are compatible in the sense that if an object of the superclass is an object of the subclass then this that object is an object of the superclass as well but that object can only call a method that is there in this in the subclass if a method does not exist in the subclass we cannot use the superclass reference to call that method in the subclass and we'll see this in the examples as well what happens is that when the compiler encounters a method call made through a variable the compiler determines if the method can be called by checking the variable's class type if that class contains the proper method declaration first case if there is that method for example we have a subclass and it has a method and we are using an object of the subclass 
to call that method that will be executed as normal. If the class contains the property declaration or in the second case if it inherits that method if there is the method is not in the subclass if the method does not exist the check then check the super class because the object of the subclass is an object of the super class that will be compiled and that is what happens in our list or array of variables when we create an array of variables we are able to assign the subclasses objects to that array only because those objects belong to the super class as well now let's look at what happens ex at the execution time at the execution time the type of the object to which the variable refers determines the actual method to use uh, we saw this in our earlier examples as well that it only depended on the type of the object that we were using to call the method the output of that method was completely dependent on the type of that object and we'll explain this again this process is called dynamic binding the method is executed based on the object not on the type of variable and in our given example what we did was we declared an array of type person the type of the array was the person class and that per, that type was the same for all of the object that we were using to uh, for a reference and those reference were the subclasses of the person class now even though the type of all of the objects was the same each object was generating a different output from the method call and this happens because the derived classes override the cook dinner method of the person class this makes the overridden cook dinner methods of the derived classes execute when the cook dinner method is called using the base class reference from the array so let's say for example this p list each of these variables has a data type or a type person and each of these variables is referencing to a different kind of object for example plist0 is referencing to the person classes object plist1 is referencing to the house chef classes objects and when we use plist1 dot cook dinner the house chef classes cook dinner method will be called but when we use the plist0 dot cook dinner the person classes cook dinner method will be called this is all because of overriding that the cook dinner method is overridden by the derived classes and it only depends on the calling object so the first line the p list 0 will invoke the cook dinner method from the person class and the p list 1 will invoke the cook dinner method from the house chef class it does not de depend on the type of the variable but it depends on the type of object that we are using to call that method that the output will be relevant to whatever their implementation of the method is in that class now let's look at what we cannot do using polymorphism what is not allowed by the compile and will possibly generate a compile time error when we try to uh, do that for example the clean kitchen method if you remember from our example was only defined in the house chef class and for example there are two objects one a subclass object with the subclass reference house chef and another is a subclass object with a super class reference in this case as we can see that we are creating an object of the subclass house chef using a reference to the super class person and in this case we are creating an object for house chef using a reference to the house chef itself now we will see and we saw in the our previous videos and in this examples that an object of the subclass is an object of the superclass and we can use those that object to call the methods that are combined in the they are common in the two classes 
so if we try to call this method and both of these methods are being called with the subclasses object for example w is a subclass object with a subclass reference and this method is being called and we understand that this cook dinner method should call the method of the house chef method it will not call the method of the person class but it should call the cook dinner method of the house chef class what if we try to do this b1 as we understand is a subclass object but with a superclass reference and this should generate a compile time error this one should execute correctly because the cook dinner method is defined in the house chef class and we if we call that method using an object of the subclass even if it is referencing to the sub uh, using a subclass reference it will execute fine the clean kitchen method is defined in the house chef class and if we call this method using an object that is uses a reference of the subclass again it it will be executed this method the p1.cookdinner method will be executed because this is a method that has been overridden from the superclass and it exists in the subclass as well and the superclass as well so this will call the subclass version of the method but the this fourth case where we are using a method that is exclusively defined in the subclass now the superclass cannot have access to uh, this subclass method that is not there in the superclass we cannot do this in java and if you try to do to this we will get a compile error and it will tell us that no clean kitchen method declared in person class if you were to be able to call this method using the person class using this subclass object with the reference to the person class then you would need to define this method in the person class and we would need to override that method but that is not currently the case and java should not and will not allow us to do this a superclass reference can be used to invoke only methods of the superclass the subclass method implementations are invoked polymorphically and that means that understandably a superclass reference can only be used to invoke only methods of the superclass but if there are methods in the superclass that are overridden by the subclasses then those methods can be invoked polymorphically for example if we change the calling object with the subclasses objects then those methods can be called polymorphically as we saw in the cook dinner uh, case java decides which classes cook dinner method to call at execution time rather than at the compile time and we saw that in our previous slides as well attempting to invoke a subclass only method directly on a superclass reference is a compilation error so we need to keep this in mind that a subclass is a superclass or an object of the subclass is an object of the superclass but the reverse is not true the superclass object cannot access the subclasses method exclusive method are not accessible in the subclass it can only access the methods that are overridden by the subclass now let's look at a couple of examples to help us try to understand or check our understanding of the polymorphism concept or idea of polymorphism let's say we are given a class a and there is another class b that extends class a if you look at a class a it has an instance variable x then a constructor a and then there is another constructor with one p 
parameter. We have a constructor A with no parameters but it initializes the variable to 100. And the, uh, the second constructor initializes the va variable to a value that is passed as an argument to this constructor. And there is then a two string method that should print the value of x when we print the object of class A. And we'll see, we will see that we are uh, having uh, declaring objects of these classes. Let's look at class B before we go into the printing details. Class B extends class A. So it should inherit the x variable x and then it should have its own details as well. We'll see how these variables are initialized for both of these classes. So when class B extends class A and we need to keep in mind the default constructor calls that we discussed in previous lectures. Class B has three constructors, one with no parameters, one with one parameter, second one, and a third one with two parameters. So we are using multiple constructors over here. And then there is a two string method that is trying to print the superclasses variables value x then the value of x for class b and the value of x for class the value of y for class b we'll try to see this now if we are creating an object of a1 if you can try and relate these outputs to the print statements for example if we are printing an a what should be the output we can try and match the outputs and for example if we are printing the object a2 what should be the output and if we are trying to print if we are printing b1 what should be the output you have seen that whatever there uh, is in the two string method when we print that object those details are printed as it is so you can go through this exercise and try to uh, match the outputs if they are correct or not in this other exercise example Apparently, we have uh, some objects that might belong to an animal class or a pet class. So these are the sub, uh, subclasses of the pet class that we can see in this slide. What you have to guess is, for example, these are the objects and each object has been initialized by reference to the class itself. So there is no reference to the super class and we are trying to print the output of a method polymorphically. They all share the same common method speak method and what we need to guess is what should be the output when we call this method on the in objects separately. So the speak method is being called uh, by the cat object, the dog object, the frog object and the flamingo object what should be at the output of these method calls if you look at the structure of the classes and their relationships if you want to increase if you want to include the implementation details or as any missing syntax you can do that for example we have the pet class and the pet class has a speak method which is printing a certain statement then that class is extended by the dog class in the dark class inherits or uh, overrides the speak method with some addition to that method. Similarly, the cat class overrides the speak method and also adds to that method. And the flamingo class extends the pet class and overrides the method with its own implementation you can implement the frog class with whatever you want to get the output from the frog class but it should have the speak method of its own that is overwritten from the pet class and you can guess are uh, the outputs of these method calls so that is the exercise that you can uh, try this will conclude our lecture 14
and we'll continue our discussion of polymorphism in the coming lectures.